The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Here's Brandon. Welcome to Old Space Show. I'm Brandon, and this is my companion, Russell McGee. This series of Old Space Show follows the semi fantastic adventures of Galen and his two astronaut pals as they wade their way through the futuristic Earth in this short lived television version of Planet of the Apes. Today, we discuss the fourth episode. The good seeds. As opposed to the bad seed. That's 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 in the uh, never happened second half of the season. Right. (laughs) When Galen hurts his leg and can't travel, Verdon and Burke seek refuge in a farm till their friend recovers. The farm is operated by a gruff but decent ape named Polar. His wife, Xantes and their three children, older son Anto, younger son Remus, and daughter Gilia. Polar puts to work the two strangers who teach him to contour farming, windmill building, seed selection, etc. Polar soon accepts these changes, but Anto resents the strangers, fearing they will hex an cow, sorry, We'll hex a cow about to give birth. All right. This one is, again, directed by Don Weiss, written by Robert W. Lenski, starring Roddy McDowell, Ron Harper, James Naughton, Mark Leonard, Jeffrey Duell, Lonnie Chapman, Jacqueline Scott, and Eileen Dietz. Uh, Lenski here, uh, the writer, he's he's new up here. He does two episodes of Planet of the Apes, a show called Mannix, the FBI, Kojak, and lots of TV, TV movies, TV miniseries throughout his career. Uh, Eileen Dietz, notable. She's ape in this, but she was Pazuzu's face in The Exorcist. So the face that she made, she's made a career off being uh, that face because she, aside from an episode of Happy Days, she mm-hmm. disappears in the early 80s all the way till the late 90s when The Exorcist had that version you've never seen anniversary. And then she's been in a lot of low-budget horror, but she did uh, show up in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Uh, as well so um as well as weird al yankovic who was also in that movie um and uh and um oh the late uh howard hessman appeared in that movie as well but yeah she's the face so the the satanic looking face in the exorcist that's her um chapman here he starred in the birds he was the shopkeep uh east of eden uh, lots of TV, uh, much of the shows we've constantly named off, and last starring in William Friedkin's The Hunted in 2003. So Friedkin back here. So, uh, <laughs> I leaned, I leaned, and then uh, this guy, and then Scott here. Uh, starring Charlie Varick, Empire of the Ants, loads of TV, including L.A. Law, and more recently shows like Cold Case. So that's, uh, that's it. Uh, this one kind of, you know, open up with uh, you know, life constantly being on the run from those gorillas. <laughs> well, and there was a little interesting thing. They, they played with the apes uh, not being able to travel by night if it was a, a cloud cover as far as right. a storm or something. So mm-hmm. they used the stars to navigate at night. Um, and our, yeah, our we heroes, have a nighttime scene, our first nighttime scene. We have torches, darkness. So yeah, yeah. Our heroes were actually able to use that to their advantage. Mm-hmm. And that was because the heroes have a compass. They do. <laughs> but yeah. Um, and uh, I, I will say with this one, because they wind up, Galen is hurt and they have to, they drag him over to this farm where they hope to uh, reside until he's better. Um, I like how, Sorry, I'm having a power. I see that. I see, you, you you conjured the exorcist, man. Pazuzu. <laughs> Ca- Captain Howdy, let us finish the episode, please. <laughs> oh, 
let me get the we can't see it but my Ouija boards right here. Um uh, <laughs> so I I like how they aren't just okay with you completely using sets of westerns and stuff like repurposing them because I feel like the barns and the huts it's up they they do feel planet of the apesy like I yes. feel like these were used for something else but they've managed to dress them put, and dress them and yeah. and reshape them to their own touch so I I will give some credit here they're not just lazy about it where they you I would understand if they were you know save money and stuff like that but yeah, this this stuff looks very much like if you went on the outskirts of one of the movies, this could exist, except for the, the cows and stuff. But yeah, I don't know if you picked up on this, and I'm jumping back just a hair. But like, our heroes actually mistreated Galen a little bit, and that's mm-hmm. why he actually rushed and ended up falling and then yes. ended up getting injured. Yeah, yeah. There's that early on. Yeah, because they're they're a trifecta, but like. Galen's super new to it. Right. Too. So yeah, they are there for each other. Um, even though the, the two go back and forth that they ultimately like, human, human. Yeah. Same, same <laughs> kind of, kind of deal. And Galen's like, what you talking about guys? Let's, I wanna... <laughs> He's still, yeah. Galen, I guess is still in a bit of a proving ground here. Yeah. Um, but they never, they never suspect him of being some sort of like deep rooted plant. Uh, or anything, but yeah, they do take advantage, and this is where they could learn to have the team. Um, I uh, I do think it's also refreshing to see apes wearing different clothes, like these tunics and things. So I'm like, okay, not everybody wears those uniforms. Like, not everybody wears the 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 uh, chimpanzee right. uh, uniforms, the gorilla uniforms, the orangutan the uniforms. Tans. Yep. Yeah, these have like they have like these tunics. They've got like an undershirt. They you know. So that's there was also like we've talked about the the class system like within the apes like it it was also interesting to see that even more because mm-hmm. like they talked about how farmers have their place in comparison to the the ape hierarchy mm-hmm. yeah and yeah, not definitely. owning their own land right yeah yeah definitely there's and it's it's interesting too in that hierarchy and the relations that these farmers and askers and apes Apes in the series, even uh, in the Gladiator uh, episode, and they never turn people over to gorillas right away. There's like a no. distrust with the gorillas. They're like, mm, come back later. But, you know, it's kind of like that. I have to make up my mind whether I want to work with you or not. The gorillas are just un... And in the films, they're the most aggressive and untrustworthy of the bunch. But it, it's kind of interesting. Well, I mean, it all, it also definitely helps that Galen's part of our core because, like, that gives them the handshake, in, yeah, yeah, the handshake for them to have that in with, and usually it's it's chimpanzees so far that we're seeing them interact with, right? Yeah, chimpanzees seem to be the the go to. There's not a lot of orangutans outside of the the city, or none that we've run into. Not, I don't yeah, think. not it's yet. All, it's the the gorillas that chase and then it's just chimpanzees everywhere that are farmers and uh whole gladiators and politicians yeah. yeah uh yeah only apes ever own farms that's what they they say <laughs> um but yeah so the the two uh burke and verdon whatever they stay and help try to help with the farm while they're there um right they they add some bring some advanced science and ideals to help them with like crops and farm. They build a windy mill and uh, they, <laughs> they, they have some tips on nurturing a cow. Um, plowing a hill plow- instead of plowing down as we joked earlier, like right, plowing, yes. yeah, in a circle around the hill mm-hmm. so that you don't lose the top soil as the rain comes down. Exactly. I, I always I felt like I'm like, is this like the play of the apes like version of witness almost? Dude, I was um, thinking, I got, like, I is this a PBS, like, <laughs> yeah. my learning channel? What's going on here? Yeah, there's a lot of hanging out. Um, there's a funny line with, um, I think it was Peter, when uh, the ape was like, the little kid ape was like, who taught you that? He goes, Abraham Lincoln. He goes, I'd like yeah. to meet him. And he goes, so would I. So would I. <laughs> uh, and, um, I but also- like, I was going to say, I also commented like 
that and we talked about how like all there's the format of the other shows that are happening in the 70s that i it, this because it was a farm episode it mm-hmm. made me wonder because of how popular at the time little house on the prairie was right whether if that affected the show and this episode actually happening yeah let's get something in there like that yeah i yeah very much so because they've got the two daughters they it's um yeah stuff with like having a like like a cow giving birth like yeah it i would it, yeah it's in the per what well, will will house in the prairie wheelhouse for <laughs> sure but they just don't have that Michael Landon factor. That's the no, no. America loved it. So Michael Landon, I don't think kids today realize how beloved, hair man. <laughs> how beloved that man was. Like yeah. he, he could do no wrong. I remember. Yeah. Especially probably growing up in the Midwest. That guy was probably a, just a God. Um, even doing a show where he had a relationship with God. Um, a highway there. Yeah. He had a, he had the, took the road, took the road. <laughs> He said, sorry, ACDC, I'm going the other way. (laughs) Taking the other road, taking the high road. Um, So, yeah, there's this, uh, so, like, the the kid is all open to these two guys helping out and their methods and what they're doing. The youngest son. The youngest son, the youngest son. There's an older son who's waiting for his turn to be on his own, and it, it relies on the cow giving birth, and he takes the calf to start his own farm. Needs to be a bull versus a heifer, which is something they talked about. And then he's had what five years that he's been waiting on right. a bull now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he's got the superstition re- regarding the cursing of the cow with the guys. And so it comes down to like the cow's having trouble with his pregnancy. And it's like, if it dies, you die. Yeah. Like it's like, it's really like, oh, geez. But they're very prim- they The primitive nature, um, their barbaric nature comes in. And, um, they yeah they that that's the big crux of like oh what's gonna happen in this episode um the 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 gorillas do come back and forth to harass but um they're always like oh they're like humans he's like oh humans look alike you know that he's like you farmers are all the same with uh that whole part and and then i i do i do like so the apes are i'm guessing all of them are vegetarians because they did have the line that humans burn flesh and eat it Yep. Yep. I'm glad you brought that up because I also like, and also there was the comment as far as a father to the oldest son that he couldn't shoot them until the cow actually died because like he was very good, like, well, not gun. uh, He was going to probably poke them with the, uh, what was that that he had a pitchfork? Yeah. The fate of the cow is in the hands of the oldest son. Right. Um, but the the, the uh, I did like that the the woman, I believe it was the mother, uh, the older one. Uh, she brought up that they don't even know if the wisdom they or knowledge or ways of the forefathers is even right or accurate. And it's a mm. slight it's a slight line, but I'm like, what sort of a huge mirror and stop and think for a moment in 1970s television? Like it, I feel like that's a, that's an ideal that we don't start popping into things till like later on. But this is a this is like kind of a huge passed over thing, but I'm like, that was kind of a huge line right there and a huge like ideal for this silly play of the apes TV show from 1974. But I was like, yeah, that's something that should have been looked at a bit more, but okay. So our writer had a Euripides moment. There is what right. you're saying. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is something that, I mean, this is how like, we're like something like, Buffy the Vampire Slayer would revolve on like, hey, just because an old guy said it doesn't mean it's right. You know, it doesn't mean we should look at who's saying it, all this stuff. So, yeah, um, Barry, that one, that struck me as kind of strong here in this episode, which is kind of like, is this like a bottle episode for this kind of show? They in like, what way? They, you know, use this farm set. They don't really go anywhere. Somebody's hurt sitting, you know. They, I mean, when you're on the run, bottle episodes, happen but like i feel like this kind of sat and just hung out best it could no you're right because on top of that and the other thing that they did here and i'm sure you picked up on this it the even with the gorillas it wasn't that they were looking for them because of orco this time Mm -hmm. it was because they were looking for some um what was it some indentured uh land or like some some humans that were 
owned by a ape that had escaped mm-hmm. was essentially the premise. So that's why they were looking for humans in this okay. episode. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the Orco search for our heroes, which that gave them some breathing room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's not a whole, I mean, I guess this is just showing more that apes and humans can live together in harmony and help one another out type episode. But um, it did include a great line I loved where um, well, I was like, he's chomping at the bit to get us out of here. And, and Galen says, apes do not chomp at bits. <laughs> and I was like, I, I want to plan the ape shirt that maybe like has a picture of Galen and then on the back says apes do not chomp at bits. That's my, my line from that. So it's up there with grape juice plus. I'd say. The one thing that I had hoped that they would have actually explored a little bit more, uh, especially since we had it where it was a more of a character driven episode mm-hmm. was they had one little scene where, um, and I, I may be misremembering which of the two heroes, but I think it was uh, Pete. Yeah they're, correct? yeah, they're kind of but interchangeable, Pete, our two guys so far. Pete was talking about his son and working on the farm and actually mm-hmm. teaching him. If I'm hoping I'm remembering the right name, but yeah. like, um, but that scene where we actually had some sort of emotional connection to his past mm-hmm. and Earth before. And I just wish we would have gotten a little bit more from that. Like we got more about his background as far as that he had some agricultural upbringing, Mm -hmm. but like they didn't really go into his emotional life with having lost his family and everything. Right. Yeah. 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 These guys realizing they're never going to see anybody again or anything. like It's not really hit them and they've not really shared. I can get in the first episode or two that they're hey it's we have to act on this moment we don't have time for this right now but now they've had time to sit around and they're sharing they're opening up to people and there there could be more of that but yeah it, and it felt like they spent more time on our secondary characters for like with the ape family than yeah. it did with the actual core cast members yeah so they're giving their guest stars some meaty stuff to have but yeah yeah, just uh, not them so far yet. But yeah, it's like I, th- these two guys, other than they're bickering one side or the other at a certain, should we go here? No, like there's no, there. one's got blonde hair, one's got dark hair, but personality wise, they're kind of just the, the same almost. Um, Galen's interesting. He's, he's, Galen, is yeah. what he is, but I don't know if that's a lot of what McDowell brings to a role when he's in it. Um, but it's it's there um but yeah it's uh, this was there's uh, the, uh, there's a lot of really strong stuff hidden here in this episode that i found but other than that it's kind of like hanging out on the farm for a while for the, the entire episode 50 minutes 50 minutes not a lot of galen um he is out of commission for he, they do go back to him but he's out of commission they focus on other apes but um, yeah. there's a slight love interest that happens because the, the daughter wants to get married. So mm. there's that little side thing with Galen. It's true. Yeah. I forgot about that. But yeah, but yeah, this but they is... don't really go anywhere with that either, though. Right. Um, this is, I guess, slightly getting into more territory that would be like, well, this is not something I feel like I see all the time in like a show like this. But I'm not like, oh, man, it's. It shows. wasn't compelling where it was like no. it gripped you and like, okay, this is what the show's about. Yeah. I think it's afraid being a genre show and where it's probably the execs want the target audience to be. It's probably afraid to dive into those kind of deep things. It kind of probably has lighten it up, lighten it up. Don't get too mushy. Don't get all, you know, this right. was probably holding back on some good dramatics. That's possibly it. Yeah, you, you said lighten it up, lighten it up, and that reminded me of that whole comic routine they have at the end with Anto, where he's yeah. like putting on a show for the gorillas to say, oh, oh no, yeah. I was the one that was going around, and I did this with the windy mill, and the shower is to actually take off my makeup. Yeah, he puts the ashes on his face or yeah. whatever, and he's like, look, I'm a human, I'm a human. So I stand up erect. Yeah, so... 
And they're probably like, don't damage that ape costume too much. We need to use the mask next week. <laughs> we need to use the mask. So, but yeah, uh, yeah, the show's still hasn't quite lifted off yet. Uh, no. Uh, no, and here we are in episode four. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it's like, all right, you sh we should be finding ground at some point in this area of to find direction of where we're going to head in the production, but not yet. It's you know what it we're looking at is it 13 episodes overall Four, 14, 14. 13, i believe 13 aired and the 14th never aired on television until reruns but the reason i bring that up is like we're four episodes in then i honestly i think this is a big part of why the show didn't actually take off some people stop watching that you know usually i always say to give them like give a show like five or six see what it does Right. Um, and yeah, at this point, it's like, well, nothing's happening. Like, this is not must see TV at this point. As much as I love Planet of the Apes, as much as people love or have a nostalgia for the show, right here is not, no, it's not hitting any kind of stride or any sort of major episode. Like, well, I will sit here for when another one of these drops, you know, like that was kind of like the first season of Space 1999. Uh, since I, I'll refer to it since it's been an old space show thing. The, it was kind of consistent, but like there would be every so many episodes, there'd be one that'd be like, oh, wow, this was actually really <laughs> good. So I'm here for whenever those hit the roulette. I don't have one of those yet to go off of. And no, no. 1999 had a couple of those early and then sort of halfway through that first season found a stride of like consistently good episodes. And then they season two decided, wow let's just change everything and it wasn't we're what off. I enjoyed we're off but this one yeah, yeah I'm waiting for like yeah, are we gonna like where's that episode that's like okay this is this is what we're here for right now it's like hey can you just like take these scripts and make them play of the apes where <laughs> we threw them away from this one show we were doing and uh just could you could you do something so that's what it feels like right now don't or worry like, space fans they do get better later on they but do. like yeah but it, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. But yeah, right now it feels like, hey, well, can you hurry up and write a script for us? I'm like, well, I'll just take this one I wrote before and mask it as a... Like, I wonder if some of these writers, if you look at their other scripts for shows in the same era, if there's kind of a constant theme or repurposing or like, mm, that's just like that one, you know? Because they know, would funny. do that because you can't... No. Nobody could watch everything back then. Nobody could no. buy like, so you couldn't, you could get away with writing the same thing every time and nobody would know. No, I, and I like, you know, that I'm a huge Dr. Who fan. I've seen that even happen where they've recycled ideas from like um, older sci-fi films and stuff and then br brought that in mm -hmm. or like the other thing. Um, uh, I actually did have a specific one that I was going to point out that they did that to, and I'm blanking well, other I mean than. Brain, Every, brain of morbius obviously mm -hmm. with frankenstein right right yeah they would borrow yeah the hitchcliffe era was all about like what classic thing can we do a twist and that's cool but like there, i mean this is kind of in your vein of revelation or remembers of the dalek silver nemesis where it's like well let's just a hot yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh like like that but yeah i'm just kind of wondering like where are we gonna hit where are we gonna when we're going to hit that one. Maybe it's coming soon, but we'll find Maybe out. Maybe next week. Yeah. Yes. But until then, it's time to take our stinking paws off this damn dirty episode. Russell, thank you as always. Thank you. And uh, until next time, where can people keep up with you? Um, two different places. One is, I, as I said, work for Indiana Public Media at WTIU, WFIU. So you can find me on uh, indianapublicmedia.org or uh, for my Doctor Who uh, work, I work for Big Finish Productions, and you can find my uh, sound designs for them on their website <clears throat> if you just search for any name there. I believe, I, I believe you have a Wikipedia entry. I do. I have a oh, Doctor man. Who wiki entry, man. which is not up to date. I need to actually add a few more things in there, actually. So that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So hashtag apes do not chomp at bits. It's also your fact for the week. Do not give an eight bits. They will not chomp it. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon Porky, UHD, written work at YSOBlue.com. There's more from the Brandon Peter show, yeah, show this week, but from old space. It's a madhouse! 
Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetersshow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetersshow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.